today we're going to talk about our experiment with timing flame level filter. My name is Ivan, my ID is 15934. Yeah, my name is Asif Barak Al Hamdi, my ID is 15771. My name is Amir Amanazi, my ID is 16075. My name is Muhammad Haikal Rehusli, and my ID is 16890. And my name is Muhammad Lukman Hanif, my ID is 16134. Hi everyone, good morning everyone. Today we are going to present our experiment, climbing film breaker. I will start with my part and introduction. Evaporation is a change of liquid into vapor at, at, at temperature below the boiling point. Okay, meanwhile, in an industrial evaporator process, and the, the objective is to remove the, to remove the solvent from boiling solution or to leave behind even more concentrated solution. But in, in this experiment, we will focus, we will focus and, we, and, we, and we will study the operation of the climbing film. The, the objective of this experiment is, uh, there are four objectives. One is to study the efficient operation pressure. One is to study the efficient of feed rate. One is to study the, the efficient of steam flow rate. Also, uh, studying the, the effect of the time of this experiment. Now, I will ask my friend to continue this experiment. Hi everyone, uh, today my part is for the objective, the procedure and methodology. And for the objective, uh, we are here, for, uh, we are doing the experiment. Uh, the main part is to study the effect of evaporative pressure on evaporation rates. Which means, uh, we want to determine uh, whether the evaporative uh, pressure uh, is increased and it will cause the evaporation rates to increase or decrease. Uh, for the procedure, yeah. okay. Uh, for the procedure, basically, uh, we open this valve, this valve, and this valve to allow the fit tank to allow the fit comes to the uh, at least uh, 25 centimeter. And then, when you reach 25 centimeter, we open the uh, steam valve and we record the timing. And then we observe the bubble forming at the at the 25 centimeter rate. This way. And when the uh, when the bubble start forming, we record the time and record the uh, the pressure. And then we continue uh, to wait until 20 minutes. And then after 20 minutes, we gather we we gather the the concentrate we see, uh, the concentrate and the condensate also. Uh, the fit comes from the uh, this bar, and then after that, uh, we measure the refractive index for these three input, and for the okay for the met uh, methodology basically, uh, first we set the vacuum pump to atmospheric, atmospheric pressure, that is 1 atm. And then we run the experiment, and after that we collect the samples, the three samples, and then uh, using the samples, we measure the refractive index. And why we measure the refractive index? So that we can calculate the concentration based on the uh, refractive index using the calibration standard. And then we repeat uh, the, the experiment with negative uh, pressure, like 200 and 400, 670, 700. And this is the calibration standard. And from now we, we can see the x axis is the refractive index and the y axis is the concentration. So as an example, when we get the, uh, you know, when we get the refractive index is, uh, best, uh, for example, 1.3, is we we uh, use the calibration index and we determine. We using this and we follow this to this uh, axis and we can get the concentration for the samples. Assalamualaikum and very good morning to Sister Sneva and all my dear friends. 
friend. Today, I'm going to talk about our result for the last experiment, which is the climbing film paper process. Basically, uh, this is the tabulated result we get from the last experiment. First of all, uh, the initial volume of the feed is 700 milliliters, and we at first calculate the, take the sample and calculate the refractive index using refractometer. Okay. The, the feed refractive index we get is 1.3336. So after that, we continue with our first experiment. Uh, we're using the atmospheric, atmospheric pressure and the level of KMNO4 which is uh, potassium permanganate is 35 cm. We, we set the level of potassium permanganate to 35 cm and we calculate and measure the time for the first bubble to appear which is 2.1. Then we take the uh, sample calculate the refractive index gain then we get 1.3451 for the evaporate then we get uh, the for the concentrate we get 1.3329 and the condensate we get 1.3329 also uh, if you can see here the um, the value is almost the same for all the evaporate condensate and the concentrate then after that we repeat the experiment with uh, the pressure negative 200 mm mercury and negative 400 mm mercury. Then we calculate the result. Next slide. Basically, this is the graph of effect of evaporation pressure, time versus pressure. As we can see here, the gradient of the graph is declining here because as the pressure is decreasing, the time will increase. Okay, for the calculation, we take the sample as uh, at first we get the fit refractive index is 1.336 right. Uh, according to the graph, we get y equal to 20.837. Uh, X minus 27.802. This is the we get the equation from the graph before. Graph before. Okay, the equation came from this graph. The gradient and also the uh, we use the this equation which came from the index. Uh, we put the refractive index value into the equation here, which is x. Then we calculate to find the concentration. The concentration for the first pitch is 0 0.226. Okay, for the mass balance, we, we take the mass, we add all the mass of evaporate, condensate, and concentrate. Uh, where the general equation for the concentration is molarity, which is number of mole over volume. Combining both equations, we will get mass equal to molarity times volume times molecular weight. Okay, for example, for evaporate at atmosphere pressure, first experiment, we, the feed volume is 700 milliliter. The concentration is we get from the previous slide is 0 0.226 mole per liter. And then the molecular weight of the sample is 158.034 grain per mole. Conversion and the mass we get from the equation is 35 grams. So that's all from me. Thank you. And the liquid and, uh, and 
the event uh, and the paper is being separated. Now, the objective of this experiment, uh, as explained by my team, Lisa, was to study the effect of evaporator pressure on the evaporation rate of potassium permanganate. Now, in order to investigate it, we altered the pressure uh, from the atmospheric pressure to negative 200 and also to negative 400. Uh, now, based on the results that we obtained uh, in this experiment, we observed that as the pressure becomes negative, less time is required for the appearance of first bubble in evaporator tube and the uh, potassium permanganate takes shorter time to boil. In other words, lower operating pressure induces higher evaporation for potassium permanganate. The phenomena can be explained as when the pressure is low, the boiling of liquid will be low as well. Hence, shorter time is required for potassium permanganate to reach the needed boiling point and this makes the evaporation rate higher. Uh, as you can see in this graph, we plotted the concentration of potassium permanganate in the evaporator against eva the evaporator pressure. And so you can see that what I've said for it, uh, it is the same as what we have done here. And to conclude, when evaporator pressure decreases, the air refractive index and concentration will decrease as well. Now, I'd like to summarize what my friends have explained about this climbing flame evaporator experiment so far. As you can see from our results, when pressure, higher pressure is applied, it takes a longer time for evaporation to occur. As the pressure of evaporator decreases, the time for the first bubble to appear and the time for boiling to occur becomes shorter. In other words, boiling occurs when internal vapor equals to the external vapor. From this, we can say that higher pressure applied at operating stream makes the flow rate of product stream to decrease which makes the concentration of potassium permanganate in the product stream to increase. The concentration of potassium permanganate in the product stream decreases with higher feed flow rate. Hence, to get the best product with higher concentration, the pressure in the operating stream should increase and the feed flow rate should decrease. As the energy balance is concerned, there is a slight heat gain and slight heat loss to the environment. Heat gain shows that there's a linear increase at both streams, at both pressure streams. The energy loss to environment increases for initial flow rates and initially levels out at the higher flow rates. Okay, that's all from our B29 group. We would like to take this opportunity to thank your, uh, to thank the GAs and our lecturer, Mr. Zamri, for giving us this opportunity, opportunity and also for helping us every time for each experiment. That's all from group B29. Thank you.